Shalom, shalom, and welcome. It's Kenny Russell, Bulldozer of Faith, Living Life in the Spirit. Here with Joey Jack Russell, we're out for a walk. We're just going to share on uh, Crossing Point. Excellent. Let's get that done now. Uh, I think that's done. And uh, we'll just add it to Bulldozer of Faith. Hope you're doing good. If you're just tuning in, just give us a shout out. Let us know where you're watching from. And uh, we're just going to share a few moments here um, on our walk. Uh, we didn't share this morning. It's a bit crazy this morning on our walk. Uh, sometimes it's not possible We're just with all of the stuff that's going on. Um, but anyway, hallelujah. Praise the name of Yeshua. It is a blessing to come and just share a few moments, giving you an update from the land of Israel and what's happening here in the land. Um, it's been a very active day in Lebanon, uh, where Israel has taken out a few more commanders of Hezbollah. And the great news, there was one more face on uh, the, the top commanders, uh, you know, the most important people within Hezbollah. The last one was killed uh, today. So that's a blessing so that uh, he has been taken out. And um, other things in the news, obviously, with what's going on with Iran, um, it's really uh, escalating uh, where Iran is talking about uh, attacking Israel. We've had drones coming in uh, from Iraq today. Uh, we've actually intercepted them before they came into Israel territory. This morning when we were out walking, we had um, drones coming into the Golan Heights uh, from Lebanon and also from uh, Syria from the, the direction of Iraq. So they were taken out. Uh, we had one, yeah, I think we've had about 60 or uh, so missiles that have uh, come in uh, so far today. So we don't know what's in store for us, but we know the IDF is working very hard on the northern border as well as the southern border. So I wanted to take a moment, just share a scripture with you of encouragement. Um, you know, I always uh, like to focus on how we see Yeshua within the scriptures. And I was thinking today about from one Exodus to another Exodus. You know, as we read the accounts of uh, Moses and how he uh, goes to Pharaoh, says, let my people go. And everything we see within the whole process of the deliverance of Israel from Egypt is all about um, our deliverance. It's the whole message of salvation. Anyway, the scripture that uh, I've been pressing in on today and just really meditating on is found in John chapter 2. And, you know, as we were driving through the country the other day, we, we drove past Canaan on a live feed, and it's the place where Yeshua um, turned the water into wine. Very controversial miracle. Maybe he just turned it into grape juice. Huh? But anyway, let's just read in John chapter 2. Uh, it says, On the third day, a wedding took place in Cana in Galilee. Yeshua's mother was there, and Yeshua and his disciples um, had also been invited to the wedding. So he had about four disciples at this stage. You know, this was after uh, his mikvah immersion and uh, the time of temptation in the wilderness. And now he's gathering his disciples together. He goes to a family wedding. Um, and Yeshua and his disciples were there. They were invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Yeshua's mother said to him, they have no more wine. You know, listen, if you're ever in a place of need and you need provision, always look to Yeshua. Look to Yeshua. Come on, you've got to reach out to what he has to say into your situation. And this is his response. Woman, why do you involve me? Yeshua replied. The hour has not yet come. The hour has not yet come. And that, this is something we see in John chapter 7 as well. The time has not yet come. The hour has not yet come. What's he talking about when he says the hour has not yet come? He's talking about the glorification of the Son of um, uh, Yehovah, the Son of God, where he will die and pay the price for us, right? But so the hour's not yet come. Woman, the hour's not yet come. His mother said uh, to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Nearby stood six stone water jugs, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. But these are pretty big uh, jugs. Now, I've heard a lot of people do interpretations on this portion of the scripture, and it's like, oh, yeah, 
yeah, Yeshua, he's come to do away with the law. Now we're under grace. And, you know, no, these were ceremonial jugs for washing. And, you know, let's think about the focus of what is taking place here. Um, the, there's a, a key message that is being delivered in this portion of scripture that I want us to get hold of. Yeshua said to the servants, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. There was no space left all the way to the very top. Then he told them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. Uh, they did so. The master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realize where it had come from, though the servants uh, who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and he said, everyone brings out choice wine first and then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink. But you have saved the best till now. And this is a uh, interesting declaration. You've saved the best to now. You know, uh, the this this wine that we receive from the Spirit of God, it's talking about salvation, you know, because um, the first public miracle of Yeshua is turning the water into wine. The first public miracle of Moses was turning the water into blood. Oh, brother, don't you know when he turned the Nile into blood, it was just uh, the, the, the the settlements on, on the bottom was all just red. No, listen, even all the jars, every container that held water, every vase, vase, whatever country you're from, <laughs> every single thing um, was turned into blood. So it was a supernatural miracle. And the purpose of this miracle that takes place here in John chapter 2 is is not, uh, you know, about, uh, you know, a, a theological debate over what's happening. It is about Moses in Deuteronomy chapter 18. He says, there is one coming like me, and you must shamar, you must listen to him. Everyone is waiting for the second Moses. Where is the second Moses? Oh, where is my deliverer. They were under Roman rule. They were praying, Messiah, come, Messiah, come. Bo Yeshua, Bo, come. We need the Messiah to come. We're under this uh, uh, enslavement, just like at the time of Moses under Pharaoh. And like I said, you go back and you read the accounts of coming out of Egypt in the spring feast, and it's all about salvation. It's all about deliverance. Listen, get out of the world system. Uh, get out of Babylon. Come on, you've heard that, haven't you? Uh, get out of those uh, ways and those systems and come into a life in Messiah. So Yeshua, the declaration he's making, I am the one that Moses spoke about. I am the one that is to come and I am here. And this is my first public miracle. This is the first public miracle that Yeshua does. And I want you to just pause and just think about that for a second, because that was the beginning of many signs and wonders and miracles. And we pray for the, the greater exodus, the greater exodus of salvation. And that's what we've been witnessing for the past 2000 years. You know, if Yeshua was not the Messiah, why is it that literally Hundreds of millions of people all over the world have been supernaturally transformed by the power of a mighty God. Isn't that amazing? Salvation has come and brought deliverance to so many. So we pray for salvation here in the land of Israel. But we don't pray for salvation based on the first Moses. But we pray, on, we pray for salvation through Yeshua, the Messiah, the one that Moses said was to come. And you must listen to him. And I love what we see in the book of Acts when Peter stands up and he explains who the Messiah is. This is the one you crucified. He is the one who was to come. Yeah, we can go back into the uh, into the Tanakh and into the Torah and we can see uh, the writing on the wall of who Yeshua is. So isn't that amazing? The first public miracle of Moses was to turn the water into blood in an area of judgment. And then here comes Yeshua. His first miracle is not turning the water into wine in the place of judgment, but he came as the Redeemer. My Redeemer comes. Even Job, the book of Job, one of the oldest books in the scripture, he saw the revelation. He, his eyes were open and he saw 
the greatness of the Redeemer that would come to set the captives free. So Yeshua came as a Redeemer, and he came to bring joy. He came to bring hope. He came to bring peace. And that's what we speak over Israel today. We speak hope. We speak peace. Yeah, we've had a relatively good day in our area where I haven't been, I've only had to run for a safe um, place once today. <laughs> Whereas on Shabbat, you know, it was every half an hour to an hour. It was crazy what was going on. But we just want to enter into the presence of God and recognize he is a great God. He is a righteous king. Yeshua, we love you. And we ask for you to pour out your spirit upon the land of Israel. We ask for you to reveal yourself in this land. And as we shared yesterday from uh, Psalm 126, what a powerful portion of scripture as we see the testimony of God's redemption that comes to the land of Israel and how the nations will see and recognize the greatness of a mighty God. So take a moment and pray for Israel. Pray for salvation to come to this land. Pray for the shalom, the peace of a mighty God to come to the land, which is really praying for Yeshua. And we pray even over this war and everything that's going on. We, we speak destruction over our enemies in accordance with the word of Yehovah. We know that the, the reason why the devil wants to cause so much trouble here is he does not want the glory of God to be poured out on this land. But there's a people of faith who've been transformed who've been born again, who are not walking in the flesh, but they're walking in the spirit. And we know that this is the hour. The hour has come. It is time for salvation. It is time for deliverance. So, Father, we pray for salvation to come to this land. We pray, Father, for signs and wonders and miracles for this, again, exodus, this deliverer of the deliverers. Moses was the deliverer of the people. Yeshua is our deliverer. He will set you free. What are you going through right now? Do you need a touch from the king? Just one touch from the king can change everything. Stop looking for answers in all the wrong places and take a moment and turn to Yeshua the Messiah. Oh, I'm so blessed and encouraged to share John chapter two with you today on Yeshua turning the water into my wine. And just remember, you know, everything we read in the Mercianic writings throughout the Gospels, we can go back into the Torah, we can go back into the Scriptures, and we can find the source of what God is saying to us for such a time as this. So this is the hour and the day of salvation. It's the day where we say to Pharaoh, to effectively to the principalities, to the demonic assignments, to Hasatan, to the devil. Let my people go in the mighty name of Yeshua. We speak freedom over this land. We ask for an outpouring of your Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, to bring transformation in this land for such a time as this. And you can stand on the promises of God right now for whatever you're going through. You know, do you need hope? Do you need encouragement? You know, we've got... Um, uh, we've got an election uh, tomorrow in the USA, very important, uh, very important for Israel, very important for all the nations of the world, what happens in the States tomorrow. We pray for an exodus. We pray for deliverance. May the deliverer come. Who is Yeshua? Not man. May the deliverer come and create a greater opportunity in the land of America for the gospel of the kingdom to be preached for such a time as this. Father, we desire to see your glory poured out on the earth. We desire to see signs and wonders and miracles. And just as you turned water into wine, you saved the best to last. So it says in Hebrews chapter 11, that even the patriarchs, even Abraham and David and, uh, uh, you know, um, Samson and all, all the people that did great things for God in the hall of faith. You know, they did not receive the fullness of the promise, but only together with us will they receive the fullness of the promise. So we thank you, Father, that you have kept the best to last, that this is the hour of the outpouring. So we ask for miracles today. We ask for opportunities to share the gospel. We ask for opportunities to minister your love and your hope. 
to this generation for such a time as this. We bless your holy name. Thanks for tuning in and joining with me. You know, sometimes you hear these electric cars, they make a noise and it sounds like uh, an alarm that's uh, going off in the distance, but we don't have alarms right now. 27 minutes ago, we did have an alarm, uh, you know, on the northern border, then in Naharia down to Akko right next to us, uh, 11 o'clock this morning, that was the last alarms that went off. We've been intercepting drones. We pray for the IDF right now as well. Uh, help them, Father, uh, and the Air Force to intercept all drones coming in. We come against um, the spirit behind uh, the Iranian regime. We just rebuke it in the mighty name of Yeshua. And we say it's time for your destruction, that the Iranian people will be set free to trust in the name of God. And we ask for Israel to be set free, that Israel will be able to see the light of Yeshua for such a time as this. Thanks for watching. Can't wait to get together with you tomorrow. Take a moment and share this message with someone. Who can you encourage with this message? If you're blessed and encouraged with our devotional time that we do here from the land of Israel, uh, we try to do it every day as much as possible. Then, uh, you know, just uh, sow into the work, sow into the things that we're doing. We do have a mission coming up in a few weeks where we are going to be traveling all over the country. We need your support. We need your help for the things that we do. We're actually asking the Holy Spirit, what other key things do you need us to be involved in? And as the funds come in, resources become available, we're able to apply them to make a difference for the kingdom. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Yeshua. So from Joey and me, Joey the Jack Russell, you good boy. We're going to go do a bit of red dot, go have a little bit of a walk here in the park. Have a blessed day. Shalom, shalom.